myself Sorupa. So uh, I am considering uh, this time a MOOC course on introduction to crystal plasticity and crystal plasticity. So basically I am a faculty member, so presently as assistant professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Guwahati. So my area of work is basically manufacturing and materials. So very specifically focused on the manufacturing processes and that processes generally link to the properties of the manufactured product. So I taught in the last few semester uh, the courses like uh, engineering materials, uh, manufacturing technology and also work as a tutorial in the engineering mechanics course. So such type of basic courses at the same time uh, master's courses like physics or manufacturing processes. So my area of uh, research work is basically the focused on that uh, welding and joining technologies and different mathematical approach linking to the different scales of analysis to produce the practically multi-scale approach and it's very specific to the manufacturing processes. So. Uh, these courses like introduction to crystal plasticity and crystal plasticity is a part one a part of the course that currently i am involved in the this specific research area so these courses hopefully it will be enjoyable to you so my objective uh, uh, in this course to produce a very simplified way so that very beginners can learn this course without much struggle, without much background of the subject itself. So focus of this course is specifically the elasticity and plasticity part for single crystal structure as well as polycrystalline structure. And of course it is very specific to the metals and alloy. So if you look into that uh, different modules of this course and what are the different topics I like to cover in this course, first on the very basic part which is structure and properties of the materials. So specifically first I will start with the different type of materials, their crystalline structure and very specific to the crystallographic directions and the planes because this will be very much useful to uh, further analysis of on in the uh, <coughs> ground of elasticity and plasticity for specific materials. So next module will be the elasticity. So it is uh, related to the elasticity of the single crystal where we we'll try to focus on the anisotropic properties uh, of the single crystal structure and we will try to derive the orientation dependence of the Young's modulus and the elastic response specific to the crystal and non uh, cubic and non cubic crystals. Next, third module will be the continuum plasticity. So here we will try to focus on the like strength of material courses, basic three dimensional state of the stresses and how we can derive the principal stresses. And what is the importance of the small strain deformation in case of continuum plasticity. So uh, next will continuation of the uh, plasticity but the behavior of the material uh, as a bulk material uh, during the plastic deformation process and considering the effect of the Bausinger effect, yield criteria, how it can evaluate or how the yield surface evolve depending upon the uh, yield criteria. And of course, in this case, we'll try to consider the anisotropic pl uh, plasticity and we'll cover the isotropic and kinematic hardening that is generally used for different materials mod modeling uh, of a uh, different type of materials. Next focus will be the uh, crystal plasticity in this case, first we will start with the basic crystal structure, crystal imperfection, different dislocation geometry, uh, how to estimate the energy uh, for different uh, type of crystal defects, what are the slip mechanisms, how we can found out the 
ill criteria and pro rule, different type of hardening rule we can form in case of uh, single crystal structure. Next, finally, the different type of hardening mechanisms like deformation of polycrystals, structure strengthening, different type of crystal, uh, crystal structure and the grain size, strain hardening, effect, solid solution strengthening, dispersion strengthening and the precipitation hardening. And finally, we will try to link the different scales of approach through multi-scales modeling approach and <coughs> in case of numerical modeling of numerical modeling of materials due to the application of the mechanical law to a specific material. So next we will try to come back to the very basic uh, classification of different materials normally we used for the engineering applications. So it's a very classified materials can be in the four categorization. First is the metals and metallic materials, ceramics and glasses, composites and polymers. These are the four types of materials normally used in our daily life. So as you know that in metals or metallic materials is basically we know that it's a good conductors of electricity as well as heat also and it is also susceptible to the corrosion it is very strong or maybe at the same time it may be deformable so this is the common uh, categorization of the metals and different met metals and their alloy also and ceramics also thermally and electrically insulated material generally considered as ceramics material which is having very high resistance to high resistance to high temperature uh, as well as it is very hard but brittle so <coughs> several applications of the ceramic materials we generally find out uh, which is mainly consist of the uh, oxides nitrides or carbides uh, and is a mixing form of the metals and non metals like aluminum oxide silicon carbide silicon uh, oxides and <coughs> bricks and refractories can also be considered as a uh, ceramic materials then if we come to that different type of polymer materials which is basic polymer materials having generally very large molecules of chain having low density normally having low weight and maybe very much flexible so polymer is generally categorization as plastic and rubber materials and these organic materials consist of carbon and hydrogen forming different chains of molecules as well as other non metallic materials can be involved to the form of the polymers now we come to that composites composites actually consist of more than one type of material but it is designed uh, to display a combination of two different type of materials but it is completely different from the uh, oxides like aluminum oxide and silicon carbide so basic objective of using the composites is to uh, retain the use of the properties of both the materials the examples of composites is like concrete plywood and fiberglass so nowadays it's a very much we found a lot of applications of the composites uh, materials and the in the different manufacturing sectors so uh, what is the most interesting part of an engineer because is that to know the structure property processing and the final performance of a specific materials so this is a common chain kind of thing that always we are interested to performance of the specific material when it is subject to some kind of uh, environment or some kind of uh, applied load but to understand the performance we need to know the correlation between the structure of different materials what are the properties and how we can process it and then as a result we can analyze the performance of a a specific material so structure of a material starts from the 
sub atomic then atomic microscopic macroscopic these are the different length of the scales where we can uh, build, build builds the block uh, accordingly to find to analyze the specific structure of our materials so specifically the difference between the different uh, length scale of the structure is the only in terms of uh, nanometer range or maybe millimeter range for example subatomic structure can be considered if the length scale is less than uh, 1 nanometer maybe atomic scale can be considered the length scale is less than 10 nanometer and microscopic can be 100 uh, to 1000 nanometer or macroscopic can be considered the length scale where it is more than 1 millimeter so linking all these things is basically the approach to a specific multi-scale when we try to analyze as a whole the performance of the material and when you try to link it to the structure of a material so now next to the uh, structure is the property of a material so maybe different type of material properties uh, we can observe that mechanical electrical thermal magnetic optical that may have some practical importance to know next is the processing of the materials there are several uh, manufacturing technologies exist to process the materials but to adopt one specific manufacturing process we need to know the property of a specific material and finally the performance of the material when specific which is very specific to uh, application needed then we can analyze the performance of a material but before that we need to know what type of processing can be done for a specific material so nowadays there are several advancement of the materials also occurring continuously and but we can <coughs> categorize that different type of advanced materials like the magnetic information storage liquid crystal display fiber optics these are the common advanced material nowadays a lot of use can also be found for this advanced materials and other advanced materials is the semiconductor there is a semiconductor means the electrical properties actually vary lies between the conductors and insulators but the electrical properties can be very much precisely controlled in case of the semiconductor material silicon germanium based titanium oxide uh, these are can, used for the ceramic capacitor so these are the typical semiconductor materials and nowadays there is a tremendous application of the advanced material in uh, bio bio related issues so specifically that is called the biomaterials so biomaterials is the first criteria of using any biomaterials is that it should be compatible with the human body so bones and teeth that is one kind of ceramic material can be used as a biomaterial artificial organ can nowadays can be produced using the plastic materials bone replacement can be done titanium alloy because all these alloys is very much sensitive to the uh, bio environment next is the smart materials so nowadays smart, smart material is used in actuator where the smart material is specifically designed to respond to change in a specific environment that environment can be the temperature stress humidity or some kind of chemical environment so safe memory alloy which is specifically made of specific combination of nickel titanium nowadays is used piezoelectric ceramics where the sense can comes from the applied load or applied stress and the output can be a capture using some input like stress or temperature change in case of smart materials so recent advancements also happening in case of magneto uh, sorry uh, nano engineer materials where the performance of the materials can be enhanced using the nano forming components uh, in a specific materials however 
the needs of the now in this society for more advanced material which is specifically apply, applicable to the high performance engine although the <coughs> certain material uh, continuous development of the materials is going on but till there is a need to specific material in case of high performance engine where weight saving is the most important criteria as well as high heat resistance properties nuclear waste processing now is also a challenge uh, there also we need some development of the materials to meet that kind of challenge hypersonic flight communication industry lot of advancements also happens using the modern advanced materials but till we need to address uh, for the development of the materials for this typical area now we come to the very basic part of the structure so as we discussed the structure starts from the subatomic atomic level crystal structure and then macroscopic and microscopic level but we can start from the very beginning that is called atomic structure of a specific material and interatomic bonding before start of the crystal structure of a material now it's a well known fact that atoms consist of the very small nucleus and within the nucleus protons and neutrons exist but outer shell there is the existence of the electron this is the typical structure of the atoms but the properties actually depends on the electronic configuration and the energy state of the state level of the electron for a specific material but here the valence electrons can influence the properties of the material like chemical electrical thermal and optical properties is largely determined by the valence electrons of course there are just several elements exist and all these elements are arranged in in the periodic table depending upon the specific configuration that is the electro positivity or electro negativity of the elements so this is a very use of the uh, <coughs> use to identify the specific properties of a material when we try to look into the atomic structure of a material okay but existence of the atomic atoms depends on the how they are binding together that is called the interatomic forces normally there are several type of interatomic forces and that binds the atoms together and they also influence the properties of a specific material so atomic bonding essentially atoms always try to uh, give up or acquire some amount of the electrons to complete their electron configurations and try to minimize their energy level based on this principle there are several bonding can be observed in case of atomic structure although it is well documented i am try to giving some overview of this kind of structure so transfer of electrons which is associated with the ionic bond and when there is a sharing of the electrons it is associated with the covalent bond but metallic bond is associated with the sea of electrons so all these three kind of bonds generally find out of the materials there is another bond that is called secondary bond and that will be discussing later on so now we try to focus on the interatomic bonding that is the ionic bonding so ionic bonding occurs between positive and negative ions that is called cation and anion but it requires the any how it requires the electron transfer large difference in electronegativity actually promotes the ionic bonding between the materials one such example is that sodium chloride so but what are the typical characteristic of ionic bonding is that it is oppositely charged ion attract and attractive force is coulombic force but in case of ionic bonding it is non directional ions get attracted to one another in any direction normally hard materials brittle materials high melting temperature materials and electrically or thermally insulating materials we observe 
the ionic bonding between the atoms or ions. Now we come to that point, the covalent bonding. The basic mechanism of covalent bonding is the share of the electrons. In this case, the bonds becomes directional, which is not in the case of ion bonding. <coughs> covalent bondings can be very strong as well as it may be very weak also. For example, diamond, silicon carbide, silicon having very good, uh, it's a very strong material, but it is having covalent bond. But at the same time, bismuth also it is in weak, but it is also associated with the covalent bonds. So polymeric materials generally exhibit the different type of covalent bonding. Metallic bonding, as I told, it is associated with the sea of electrons and the having more electropositive atoms that donate their valence electrons to form C of electrons surrounding the atom. So in this case, non-valence and the atomic nuclei actually form the ion cores and valence electrons belong to no one particular atom but drip throughout the entire metal. So primary bond for metals and their alloy is generally follow the metallic bonding. Apart from the primary bonds, there is also secondary bonding which is also called Van der Waals bonds. When different group of atoms have a non-symmetrical electrical charge, they actually, uh, for, they actually bond by the electrostatic attractions and this arises actually from the interaction between the dipoles. So normally Van der Waals bonds are very weak as compared to the other primary bonds. Now if we look into the summary of all different type of bonds and their specific remarks or conclusion from the different type of primary and secondary bonds. So ionic bond, it is the bond energy roughly between the 150 to 370 kilojoule per mole but physical behavior we observe in case of ionic bonding typically hard and brittle, high melting point, good thermal and electrical conductor. But it is the non-directional. Covalent bond, also similar range of the bond energy, but it is very hard, it can be very high melting point temperature, but usually poor in thermal and electrical conductor. But difference is that from the ionic bonding is, it is directional. So semiconductor, ceramics and polymer chains generally observe this kind of covalent bonding. Metallic bond having very low bond energy as well as moderate energy which is 200 kilojoule per mole but it can be very soft, it can be very hard also having as well as low as well as very high melting point having good electrical conductivity also very good mechanical, product, mechanical properties like malleability and ductility but metallic bond is non-directional in nature and most of the metals we found the metallic bond. Secondary bond which is having very less amount of the bond energy as compared to the other three bonds but it is directional it from the interchain intermolecular and specifically polymer is having the this kind of secondary bonds. So this is all about the atomic structure. Now we try to shift to the crystal structure of a specific material. So crystal structure, the next level of the atomic structure, where we can find out that the different atoms arrange one a specific sequence. When the regular re repetitive arrangement of atoms or ions actually exist over a long range which is typically more than 100 nanometer then it forms a crystalline structure. Non-crystalline structure the difference is that arrangement of the atoms holds for a short range. Of course the long range and short range it's a uh, scale specific long range we can consider which is length of the scale is above 100 nanometer 
and that is called that actually forms the crystalline structure and if it, the scale is less than the, uh, <coughs> less than even typically less than 100 nanometer then it generally holds for a short range of uh, non crystalline solids for example glass is the non crystalline solid now single crystal consists of one large crystal that is follow some specific arrangement of the atoms and polycrystalline material which is having so many crystal but within which having variant orientation and within that it forms one specific grains nowadays we also observe the liquid crystal as well but liquid crystal is a specific polymeric materials having a special type of order and but it behaves like a amorphous material in one state specifically in the liquid state but some polymer molecules undergone crystalline structure in a small zone with some external electrical field or temperature change so this principle is applied in the liquid crystal display i lcd technology but when you try to analyze the crystal structure of a solid material, we assume the shape of the atom as a spherical. So that is called typically hard sphere model. So based on the spherical structure of, of an atom, we try to analyze the crystal structure of specific material. So it starts with the very basic things that is called the lattice. Lattice are the specified points in a three-dimensional space where it follows some identical arrangement of the atoms and if you see that each point is considered as a lattice point. So, when we try to analyze the crystal structure of a specific material, first step is to represent the structure in the form of unit cell. So unit cell is actually building block of the crystal structure and it represents the smallest unit where we can find out the characteristics of all the atomic arrangements of a specific structure. But corresponding to each point, is can be defined as a lattice point and the parameters are called as the lattice parameters for example if we see in the figure the length of the edge is defined a b and c and angles are the alpha beta and gamma actually the six parameters constitute the different type of crystal structure of a specific material so looking into these six parameters, there are several variations of the atomic arrangement of the atoms that we can categorize as seven lattice system, which actually says that from the least to the most symmetric part of the structure. And with the four seven lattice system, we can constitute the 14 numbers of Bravais lattice. And this atoms can be arranged in a simple base center, body center and face centered positions. Let us look into what are the different base seven lattice systems and corresponding the type of the lattice structure. First is the triclinic. So in triclinic structure, if we look into that uh, here the dimensions A, B and C they are not equal and alpha, beta and gamma these are the not as 90 degree and this is also sim this is can be called as a simple structure. Next if we look into that monoclinic structure in this structure if we see here the simple structure as well as base center structure in simple structure the one of the angle is not equal to 90 degree but other two angles are 90 degree and here all the edge lengths are not equal with each other in base centered structure if we look 
here all the three angles are not equal and edge lengths are also not equal. Now orthorhombic structure in this case it is having four different types of structure simple base center body center and face center structure. So here the typical characteristic is that all the edge lengths are not equal but the angles alpha, beta and gamma all are 90 degree. So this constitutes four different types of orthorhombic crystal structures. Now rhombohedral structure here all the angles are not equal but edge edges are equal and this constitute only the simple structure. Tetragonal structure is the where two edges are equal but the not the third edges are not equal to others and it constitute two different simple structure as well as body centered structure. Here the hexagonal structure here in this structure the two edges are equal but which is not equal to the height. In cubic structure we found out that simple structure body center structure and face center structure here all the angles are equal to 90 degree as well all the edges are equal. So in summary we can say there are seven unique crystal structure in three dimensional space and there are 14 distinct arrangement of the lattice points which is known as the Breves lattice. So based on this crystal structure we can analyze further for different type of engineering materials which he used common in the, uh, commonly. Crystal structure of a specific material can be based on the lattice and the basis. Lattice is simply a point in a three dimensional space and basis is corresponding to a group of single one atom or a group of atoms that is located one specific sequence or in a particular way and also associated with the lattice point. So crystal structure actually combine effect of the both lattice point as well as basis. Normally in case of the pure metal one single lattice point there exists single atom and if a compound materials one single lattice point there may be there may exist the more than one atoms on that specific lattice point this is the specific very basic structure of a crystal now we'll try to analyze the very common crystal structure first is the simple cubic structure in simple cubic structure the figure shows that the arrangement of the atoms on a cube at eight different corners. So that eight different corners and there is a space also inside the centroid of the crystal. In this case the polonium actually follow this type of crystal structure but it is to be noticed that the unit cell consists of a part of the atoms not the full volume of the atoms exist within the one unit cell so so now we look into the body centered cubic structure that is called bcc structure in bcc structure there exist eight atoms at the corner at the same time one atom exists at the center of the Cube within the body, i.e., within the body itself. So, in this case, the iron, titanium, strontium, molybdenum, chromium, they actually follow this type of structure. 
nucleus centered structure that is called FCC structure apart from the eight corner atoms there are six faces on the six faces there exists six deep atoms also iron aluminium nickel copper silver this type of materials actually follow the FCC structure so it is to be noticed that the iron also having BCC structure as well as FCC structure also so that we will discuss later on <coughs> this is one of the most uh, common structure that is called hexagonal close pack structure i.e. ICP structure here if you see that the they are on the face there are six atoms exist and the inside the atoms inside the structure itself there exist the middle layer three atoms again the repetition of the same arrangement of the top surface so this is the constitution of the hexagonal close pack structure and titanium cobalt zinc actually follow this type of structure so apart now if we look into that typical parameters when you try to explain the different common crystal structures like simple cubic BCC structure, FCC structure and ICP structure so here it is mandatory to know that what the total number of as atoms associated within the unit cell of this different type of crystal structure what are the relation between the atomic radius and the lattice parameter how we can estimate the coordination number and what are the coordination number for all these four basic type of crystal structure and what are the packing density or atomic packing factor for this type of crystal structure so first if we look into the simple cu cubic structure here if we see that there exist only eight corner atoms and sharing of the atoms is one eighth volume within the unit cell so 1 8 into 8 that actually represents the only one number of atoms exist within the unit cell of the simple cubic structure now we look into the coordination number what is the coordination number so if we pick up any of the atoms within the unit cell and if we try to find out the continuity of the atoms which in continuous contact with the surrounding atoms then we can find out the coordination number of a specific atom so in this case if we consider any one of the atom of the simple cubic structure and if we look three different direction maybe x y and z we will be able to find out there is a continuous contact in x direction one atom with another two atoms in y another two and z another two so here the coordination number is 3 into 2 that is 6 now packing fraction packing fraction actually decides the what is the amount or what is the volume of the atoms occupied within the unit cell so it is the typically the ratio of the volume of the atoms within the unit cell and the total volume of the unit cell so in this case it is also necessary to know the relation between the uh, lattice parameter and uh, atomic radius of the atoms so in this case since we need to know the contact between the atoms so in simple cubic structure along the edge, edge two atoms are in contact so if the lattice parameter is a then we can write a equal to 2 into r or r is the atomic radius so this is the relation between the lattice parameter a and the atomic radius so now If we look into 
then BCC structure and if you try to find out what is the coordination number and what is the total number of atoms in BCC unit cell. Here if you see that there are 8 coordinate atoms and one body atom. So 8 coordinate atoms actually share the 1 8 of the volume and the body centered atoms fully exist within the unit cell. So then here total number of atoms equal to 2 in this case. Now if we look into that coordination number in this case if we consider the body centered atoms so it is very clearly associated with the 8 corner atoms so that the coordination number is 8 in this case but what may be the relation between the lattice parameter and the atomic radius in this case so we need to know the atomic arrangement of this specific crystal structure then we can easily find out this correlation let us look into this structure here the atoms coordinate atoms is not are in continuous contact between the along the edges rather it is in continuous contact along the body diagonal so looking into that the body diagonal if the lattice parameter is a so body diagonal actually represents root 3 a so that is kind of continuous contact is like that so in this case we can say that root 3 a equal to r plus twice r plus r so that is 4 r So this is the relation between the lattice parameter and the atomic radius. So this can be easily derived if the arrangement of the atoms is known or a, for a specific crystal structure. Now packing fraction in this case we can easily find out what is the volume of the atoms within the unit cell divided by the volume of the total volume of the unit cell. In that way, we can find out the packing fraction is 68% in this case. Now, if we look into that, QB close pack structure or this FCC structure, then we can find out that number of atoms associated with this unit cell there exist 8 corner atoms having 1 8 sharing and there also exist the 6 phase atoms but sharing is only 50% within the unit cell so in this case total number of atoms 1 8 to 8 corner atoms and half sharing for six phases so that means total number of atoms is four in fcc crystal structure now similar way we can find out the number of atoms in case of acp crystal structure here if we see there are 12 atoms on the bottom face and of the upper side so total 12 atoms but sharing is only one sixth volume of the atoms and two phase atoms which is sharing is the 50 percent and there are the three atoms which exist inside the volume of the hexagon so in this case total number of atoms in case of HCP structure is six so now if we observe that the Packing efficiency for the FCC structure and the ACP structure is 74%. So among all these materials, this is the having the highest packing efficiency. That means the atoms are most densely packed 
in case of FCC ACP structure as compared to the BCC structure and simple cubic structure. So these all the analysis can be useful for the to solve any kind of other different type of problems. Now of course when you try to represent the different type of common structure and using the different representing the different unit cell we can find out that actually this is this follows some specific sequence of the atoms for example in hexagonal close pack the one layer if we assume this is as a layer a arrangement of the atoms next layer is the b and next layer as the a again next layer as a b so there is alternate arrangement of the atoms we generally observe in the hexagonal close pack structure but in case of fcc structure it is the atomic arrangement also not the alternate sequence of different layer or maybe we can say this is a different stacking sequence here the stacking sequence actually follow in this way the a one specific arrangement of the atoms second layer it is a b if we specify the then third layer it is c again the repetition of the same a b c so basically the atomic arrangement uh, uh, in fcc structure follows three different a b c layers but it is not the case of the scp structure scp structure it follows in that way a b a b in that sequence of course when you try to say the fcc structure follow a b c in this sequence but that sequence follow normal to a specific plane in case of FCC structure that we will discuss later on. Now looking into the different type of crystal structure, uh, what is the for different material, it is possible to know the estimate the theoretical density of the material. So specifically the density can be defined as the ratio of the mass and volume so in this case we can find out the rho equal to n a y v into n where n is the number of atoms in a unit cell that we can easily estimate second is the atomic weight of a specific material that is well, well known or well documented and third is the volume of the unit cell if we know the lattice parameter or if we know the relation between the uh, atomic radius and the lattice parameter for, for a specific material then we can find out the volume of the unit cell and n is the typically above address number so by using this formula we can find out the theoretical density of a specific material so of course it can be used also compound material but so far we have discussed the crystal structure of the different materials but that is in case of the pure metal now other mathematical calculation can also be done by looking into the crystal structure that is called planar densities sometimes it is important to know this parameter planar packing fraction also so planar packing fraction is the what are the fraction occupied by the atoms over a plane not the over entire volume of the unit cell similarly planar density can be defined what is the total number of atoms per unit area <coughs> so on a specified plane only okay. so if we know all this parameter then we can easily find out planar density and planar packing fraction of a specific material so there is a difference between the planar density and planar packing fraction planar density actually represents the number of atoms per unit area but planar packing fraction is a simply the ratio or some numericals now two important things are there as i mentioned that iron can exist to different type of crystal structure depending upon the 
a different temperature range like uh, so that type of transformation is called the allotropic transformation and this allotropic transformation is generally used for the this term is generally used for the pure element for example iron can be transformed from bcc structure to fcc structure so in this case it is associated with some volumetric change so this needs to be addressed when you try to analyze the allotropic transformation of pure metal and of course it happens within over a specific range of temperature next is the polymorphism or polymorphic transformation so polymorphic transformation is associated with the compound material for example zirconium oxide where it transforms from tetragonal to monoclinic structure of course it is associated with some volumetric change now this is the basic crystal structure of a very simple materials uh, specifically for the pure metals we have analyzed now we will try to focus on the crystallographic direction and crystallographic planes and how we can decide the crystallographic direction so we will try to focus on first the cubic system in this case direction can be found out upon the projection of a vector after choosing the origin of a specific crystal structure or fixing the different axis conventionally a right hand coordinate system is generally followed but the origin can be chosen arbitrarily but we choose all this case to look into the interest of the easiest solution of the problem let us look into the example then it may be very much understood procedure for the writing directions in miller indices specifically when you try to represent the direction in a specific crystal structure that is called the miller indices and we represent in terms of the miller index in this case first we try to determine the coordinates of the two different points and then subtract the coordinates of the second point from those of the first and then clear the fraction to give the lowest integer values for all the coordinates and we represent this other direction in case of specific crystal let us look into the several examples for the miller indices of a crystallographic direction first first point is that index are written in the square bracket but without commas that example is given like this the square bracket and h k l in this form next point is that negative values are written within a bar over the integer but for example if h less than 0 that means if it is negative then the direction can be represented is like this if we look into that figure so first to find out the miller index of a specific crystallography direction we need to choose the origin suppose this point is chosen as origin and then following the right hand coordinate system we choose the axis x axis y and axis z now let us look into how we represents the direction oa we look into that direction oa is corresponding to this 1 0 so it is like that the coordinate of a is 1 0 0 and final coordinate of the origin simply 0 0 0 so resultant is the 1 0 0 
zero. But when you try to represent, in terms of Miller index, we represent in the third bracket. So H first component, K zero, L zero, like that. So one zero zero actually represents the x along O A within the unit cell when we when we have specified the origin and the three different axes. Now how we can represent the OB? If you look into that OB, O B, so here if you look into that OB, OB can be represented like that 1, 1, 0. So coordinate of B is specifically that X component is the 1, Y component is 1 and Z component is 0. So accordingly we can find out that direction OB is 1, 1, 0. Let us look into the direction OE. Assuming that OE along the Y direction it is of unit length. So in this case the X component is 0, Y component is a negative direction of Y so minus 1 and Z component is 0. Now coordinate of origin 0, 0, 0. So finally OE represents 0, minus 1, 0. So when you try to represent in terms of the Miller index then it will be third bracket 0, 1, 0 but negative integer value can be represents over a bar like this. So this is the Miller index of the direction OE. So similarly we can find out the different directions OF, CB in a similar fashion. Now equivalent direction. So since directions are vectors, so a direction and its negative are not identical. Same time a direction and its multiple are identical specifically 1 0 0 or 2 0 0 indicates the similar direction. Certain group of directions are equivalent in a cubic system if we change the axis coordinate or if we extend, it will transform the axis x, y, z. So it depends probably the similar direction can be represented as a form of as a group. Like the group can be written in this way. For example, 1, 0, 0 in the group, it actually represents the axis x along x along y as well as along z also. So this is a bulk can be represented in the equivalent form or as a family form or as a group. Now we can represent the crystallographic plane in terms of the Miller index form. But in this case we need to first identify the coordinate that intercepts on intercepts on the different axis. The coordinates at which the plane intercepts along the x, y and z axis need to find out first. If the plane is parallel to an axis, then it intercept can be considered as infinity. If the plane passes through the origin, then in this case we can shift the origin or we can consider other equivalent plane. Next step is to find the reciprocals of the intercepts. Next clear fractions due to the reciprocals but not necessary to reduce the lowest integer values. Planes are written in parentheses where the bars indicates the negative index. For example, if a is less than 0, then it can be represents the plane in terms of this which is different from the directions where we use generally the square bracket. 
Let us look into some example to find out the Miller index of a specific plane. Example, the plane A, if you look into the figure, which is, the plane A is parallel to the X. So, parallel to the X axis, that means intercept with respect to X axis can be considered as infinity. But the intercepts along Y and J are one and Z also one. Now, next step is to take the reciprocals of all this intercept length. Now it represents clear the fraction zero become zero one one. So the Miller index of this plane is zero one one. Now if we look into the plane actually B, the plane B actually passes through the origin. So in this case we need to shift the origin or we need to consider another equivalent plane and then we can find out the Miller index of this plane. Let us look into several examples. So it may be more, it will be more obvious to find the Miller index of the different planes. Let us look into the first figure. In this case, we have defined the origin and we have defined the three different axes. So the highlighted plane 100, it is actually represents basically YZ plane. So intercept along X, Y and Z can be considered as a unit length along the x it can be unit length. So along y the intercept length it is parallel to the y axis so intercept length can be infinity. Z also the it is parallel to the z axis at the same time the uh, intercept can be considered as infinity so finally the Miller index will be the 100. But here we observe that this plane actually passes through the origin. But in this case we can shift the origin to some other point and then accordingly we can constitute the x, y and z axis. Then we can decide the uh, Miller index of this specific plane. Second figure, if we look into that, the highlighted plane, here the 1, 1, 1 plane so that plane actually intercept the x, y and z axis in the half, half and half. So if you take the reciprocals of half, 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 then we can find out 2, 2, 2. But we can reduce the integer and it is can be written as 1, 1, 1. So this indicates the specifically 1, 1, 1 plane. And of course the 1, 1, 1 Two 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 or maybe three three three. That actually represents the different parallel planes. So third one, we looked that that this plane actually it is the first. It is parallel to the z axis. So intercept length is infinity z axis, but it intercept length along x and y both are one. So if you take the reciprocal, then it becomes one by one. At 1 by infinity. So finally it becomes 1 1 0. So this is the this is the plane. So these are the typical ways to find estimate the different planes uh, and find out the Miller index of a specific plane in a crystallographic structure. But it is to be noticed that planes and their negatives are identical but planes and their multiples are not identical. But in a cubic system, a direction that has same index as a plane is perpendicular to the to that plane. This is a very significant uh, <coughs> conclusion that to be useful for the further calculation. Let us look into the other examples, the different 
planes and 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and actually these different planes which can be formed in the equivalent form and this is equivalent due to the symmetry and there exists such three different planes simply the changing of the position of one so maybe one zero 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 one zero 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 one and their negative values can constitute six different types of the planes and in the equivalent form it can be written as the second bracket in this form similarly the one zero one plane by changing the position of one one zero we can represent the different planes and the six different way and all actually represents the in the equivalent form apart from the identification of the mirror index of a specific plane within the unit crystal structure it is also necessary to know how to construct the different direction and planes in a unit cell first it is necessary to know what is the uh, intercepts of a specific plane and then consider, consider the reciprocals of that plane are not necessary for the direction and try to reduce the lowest set of integer in this case and then we can finally plot it so drawing the different type of planes in a cubic unit cell may be useful so this can be considered later on as an assignment how to draw the different type of uh, planes and directions in a unit cell now in case of hexagonal, hexagonal close pack structure we try to represent directions and planes but here the difference from the cubic structure is that cubic structure we represent there is a three components or basically three axis system but in this case we need to define the four coordinate axis one is the a1 a2 and a3 it's like one specific plane and another is the height c and this is the typical arrangement for the ACP structure and this type of index is called Mueller Brevis indices for hexagonal close pack structure. So here if we see that there is a correlation between the three axis system and the four axis system that is the hexagonal close pack structure to the cubic system. So I think it is not uh, that scope of this what but that exist actually now we try to find out the direction opposite to the a3 axis from the center in a four axis system so specifically what is the direction and how we can represent in terms of mirror wave index indices in case of acp structure if we look into that and if you see that we need to define first the coordinates of this point on the three axis system so this axis three axis system in hexagonal close pack structure actually exists at the difference of 120 degree so opposite to the a3 axis actually the coordinate if we project on the two different axis Here, if we consider as a total unit of length 2a along the axis, so this length actually represents the unit a, this length actually represents the unit a, and a1, a, along the a2 it is a, but along the a3 it is minus twice a, and along the z the coordinate is 0. So when you try to represent this in terms of the Miller indices in the four axis system that is 1, 1, 2 bar 0 and that can be using the correlation that can be converted to the equivalent direction in case of three axis system or cubic system. So similarly, similar fashion we can construct 
the different direction may be opposite to a1 so rearrangement of this numbers which is corresponding to opposite to a1 similarly opposite to a2 we can find out that can be this represents actually opposite to a2 similar way we can find out we can define the different planes in case of uh, HCP structure let us look into the some basal planes maybe this plane so here the this plane is actually parallel to the all the three axes a1 a2 and a3 but perpendicular to the the intercept along the z axis is unit 1 so infinity infinity 1 if you took the reciprocals then planes can be represented as 0 0 0 uh, 1 similarly if we look into the other planes also uh, uh, for example the prism planes a b c d this plane and before defining this plane first we fixed the axis a1 this is axis a2 this is axis a3 and this is axis c so in this case if we find out the int this plane intersecting along the a1 axis this is one along a2 axis it is parallel along a2 axis it is parallel so intercept length can be considered as infinity and along a3 it is intersecting a3 axis but in negative direction so that is considered as minus 1 at the same time this plane is parallel to the c axis so the intercept length can be considered as infinity so in this case if you take the reciprocals of all these things the plane can be represented as 1 0 minus 1 0 or 1 0 1 bar 0 so this is a typical representation of the specific plane in case of hexagonal flow spec structure now if we look into uh, in a summary that different flow spec planes and direction exist in the different type of crystal structure obviously we have discussed only the simple cubic bcc fcc and acp structure so among this simple cubic structure the we can observe the different close pack planes and different close pack direction for example simple cubic structure 100 so that is the along the edge of a crystal structure that is the close pack direction in case of bcc structure 111 so that means along the body center body diagonal that is the close pack structure in case of bcc in case of fcc 110 that means it is the along the face diagonal this is the close pack structure and hcp also having 1210 or 1120 these two types of close pack directions so that means close pack direction the atoms are in continuous contact now if we find the what are the close pack plane for this type of simple cubic uh, simple cubic structure and hexagonal structure we found the simple cubic and bcc structure not having any close pack planes because not any plane the all atoms are in continuous contact but in case of fcc the close pack plane is 1 1 1 so basically uh, that 1 1 plane all the atoms exist in such a way they are in continuous contact with each other so that's why this plane is considered as a close pack plane in case of hcp structure as well we can find out the 001 or 0002 these are the basically the parallel planes so these are the either base plane this represent the base planes so that base planes all the atoms are in continuous contact so that planes can be considered as a 
close pack friends now this is all about the different type of structure their directions now sometimes it is important to know the very specific elementary thing for example isotopic and anisotropic behavior which may be useful when you try to analyze the anisotropic behavior in case of elasticity and plasticity of a specific crystal structure so aluminum although it is fcc structure but the material their arrangement of the atoms may not be the same in 111 or 100 direction so that actually bring some anisotropic behavior interplanar spacing is the another elementary thing which is related to the crystal structure that distance between two parallel planes having the same miller index or belongs to the same family so d is the interplanar spacing h k l represents the miller index of a uh, specific uh, crystal structure and a it represents the lattice parameter apart from that we need to know the repeat distance so distance between the two lattice point along any direction that follow the similar sequence of atoms actually all these elementary uh, terms can be useful in a uh, later discussions on when you try to discuss in the imperfection of the defects in the crystal structure so if we look into the comparative analysis of different crystal structure we can see that fcc and scp uh, there is a almost uh, specific plane of fcc and scp they are also having the similar kind of arrangement for example one one plane of fcc structure and 0001 plane of scp structure actually same arrangement of the crystal generally observed but 3d structure as not may not be the identical so it can follow the different stacking sequence okay that we have already discussed in certain situation and if we look into that uh, uh, <coughs> crystal system and the uh, <coughs> the lattice d we try to estimate the d for the different type of crystal structure we need to know the miller indices of a specific plane and uh, which is different uh, from the uh, cubic tetragonal and orthorhombic cases so that's all for today so next we'll try to represent the different type of the crystal structure and uh, what are the uh, <coughs> interstitial sites exist within the crystal structure thank you